Listen up, mercenaries. Incoming! Yeah! Let's get rowdy! <laughs> I got a little job that needs doing. Time to show off the gun. The calm before the storm. Let's talk about what it's all about. To get started, uh, what was the uh, like origin of the game? Like, Did you come into the organization with the idea, or was it something kind of already germinating that they were hiring for? So when I started, uh, the, the core of the game had already kind of been figured out. They knew the possession was there, and that's kind of the hook of this game, right? Gotcha. Um, so that, that was largely figured out. I kind of came, I came in about a year ago right. at a point where they knew the core gameplay. They were like, okay, we're ready to ship this game. How do we do this? How do we figure this out? And, and at the time when I started, at least, it was, you know, big ambitions, right? Like, we want to do 10 maps and 10 characters and uh, we want to do everything basically right. and we're, we're honestly a tiny little indie team you know we yeah. work within Rooster Teeth obviously is <laughs> a bigger corporation but they're uh, they're focused on everything else we are a tiny little indie team uh, we're only 19 right now okay um, and even a year ago we were barely 10 <laughs> um, so really the the version of the game you played here at RTX um, that you see in the trailer is you know, roughly a year's worth of work. Um, yeah. You know, they prototype that for a little bit longer than that, about two, two and a half years, I think. Um, but the the version you see now is about a solid year of work. I was going to say, for a year, that's fantastic. Like, it was already really yeah. fun. Uh, and I definitely know, uh, I think we talked briefly when I was there for the playtest, mm -hmm. that uh, the goal is definitely to kind of branch it out from there, probably more characters, more maps. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so right now the target is next month and on PC coming through Steam primarily? Yes. Yeah, we'll start on Steam. We're totally focused on Steam right now. Um, I would love to go console and everything right. else, but it's just we're just focused on Steam at the moment. Uh, and it to be, I uh, believe you said, controller supported as well? Yes. Terrific. Absolutely. Uh, so now as far as working with in-house at Rooster Teeth, was there always the idea for it to be primarily in-house talent for the voice acting, or was that something where you kind of tested some people outside as well and found that you liked the, the little, little bit of both. Um, cool. We've got amazing voice talent, right? So okay. why not take advantage of what's there? Right. Um, uh, and, you know, we have Captain Boom is also oh, Dave Fenoy. Oh, right, Which right. he is amazing. <laughs> that guy is fantastic. So oh, yeah, while we do, we did focus on the in-house voice talent, um, we got Dave as well. And then as we add new characters, we'll, we'll reach internally, we'll reach externally. So what would you say are some of the bigger influences on the game design elements, like as far as mechanics go? Definitely, uh, you know, the Dead by Daylight. Mm -hmm. um, not so much Evolve. That, you know, we get compared right. to Evolve a lot uh, for obvious reasons, but that sure. actually kind of wasn't in the mix in the beginning. Yeah. It was more the Dead by Daylight. Um, and there's actually um, a mode in Halo uh, Zombies oh, right. where... You know, if there's one with the energy sword, you kill somebody, they turn into one, right? And it was yeah. kind of, that was kind of like the seed that kind of planted all of this. Gotcha. Um, and early iterations of the game were much more serious. It sure. was very hard science, right? Very alien Good isolation. Product. And it just wasn't, just wasn't panning out. It wasn't as fun as yeah. they wanted it to be. And so I was like, you know what? We work at Rooster Teeth. Like, let's let's have a little bit more fun with this. Let's be a little more campy. Right. I was gonna say, mixed with that and the fact that it seems games with a lot more personality are yes. seeming to be really taking over and having Definitely. more longevity. Definitely. And I did a little bit of research at yourself that you came from a, a boss community. That's right. Yep. Uh, so, did, were, were there some design concepts that you used there that you felt like transitioned well into the environment here or to the game here? Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially at the end of Boss Key, we were working on Radical Heights. Right, which is great. Super <laughs> campy, right? Like, we were just making fun of ourselves. Just it was launching like bikes off explosions. Yeah, exactly. We were like, what is this feature? How do we crank this up to 11? Sure. Um, and we get a lot of that here at Rooster Teeth as well. And that was actually one of the great things when I started here at Rooster Teeth, is a lot of people on the team were actually fans of Radical Heights. Oh, awesome. And they were like, can we, can we do the thing you guys did there somehow in this game? Like, how can we make this more fun like right. ramp it up to 11 so we're definitely even uh when we're trying to think of new gadgets for example mm -hmm. it's you know we those are basically grief items like you're stealing right. nuggets from people so oh, it's yeah. the same kind of thing like how can we mess with each other uh one of the big things in the trailer that, that i love was like you can work together for a bit yeah <laughs> uh, what was the uh was that kind of there when you came in or is that something that you kind of built up more where it's like okay this is more semi-cooperative it was it was there when i started um we've definitely pushed it uh oh, further cool. since then uh because well yeah it technically is 4v1 but it's it's not at all right like right. it's it's 4v1 or 2v3 however it may be we actually get situations um in some play tests where maybe somebody uh comes in who's really really good yeah. and they're just dominating and there'll actually be situations where like the mercenaries and the chicken will gang up on another mercenary <laughs> um and that's actually reason uh when the game comes out, the voice chat is yeah. going to be the whole game. There's no mercenaries versus alien side. Everybody can just kind of oh, hear everybody. Awesome. Um, and we would love to actually, we haven't gotten there yet, tiny little team, right. but to do proximity chat so that it's a little more, you know, you can oh, kind of cool. scheme a little bit more. Uh, well, I was going to say also, is there a uh, thought towards maybe uh, a private lobbies or private rule sets, like, you know, different amounts of 
tokens or maybe even where because uh, i believe it's you can't directly shoot and damage another mercenary is correct thoughts to maybe make that a, an optional setting type yeah of thing? absolutely we've got um we've got a huge list of things we would love to add yeah. um it's just a matter of what we can get done oh, sure. before release right that's definitely on there i would love to be able to add custom games and mutators and all that kind of stuff but it's you know no, exactly. not, all, not on the table for launch i can definitely say i mean playing it is like this is going to be fun either way, and as long as it's got uh, a good life development life yeah. cycle after release. Absolutely, and that's th that's a big focus for us is that we look at launch next month as the start line. Sure. Like that's we go from there. We're going to support this game as long as people will play it and do all that kind of stuff. Um, and especially, you know, we'll we'll kind of judge and adjust based on what the fans want. Right. If that's a really big thing, people are like, I really want custom games. Then maybe we'll shift some resources, move them, some things on the priority list. Um, and I, I know, uh, like Twitch integration too. It'll probably be something people are gonna want to see pretty quickly. Yeah. So that might be say, something we'll jump on earlier. Thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, is pro is private lobby something already intended for? Like where you can just get a group of five friends and just play matches? So or? you can. Um, we do have a party system okay. in the game, so you can party up with five players and just join a match. It's not technically a private server or anything, but it's the five of you and you can only have five in a match. So it's right, exactly. basically a private game Which at that works point. Which great. Yeah. Uh, I was also gonna say uh, so. With the release plan, so it's. I know that you guys are also selling it directly through Rooster Teeth. Yes. Is that directly to a Steam key? For yes. Convenience? Yep. If you buy on the Rooster Teeth store, uh, you, you just get a, a Steam key. For your team, as you said, it started with ten. Is that nineteen? Was this? Is this like the in-house? As far as the in-house team goes, was that the team that worked on the Ruby game, or is this kind of like a different oh. team that had built up for this? So um, the Ruby team was, I think, only four or five people. Okay. Um, and we have. I think three remaining members from that original team. Oh, gotcha. um, they launched Ruby, and then Rooster Teeth was like, hey guys, you did a great job. What do you want to do next? And they kind of put it in their hands. Um, and the games team did a kind of pitch fest internally, and they ended on what eventually became Vicious Circle. And then they prototyped for a while with that small team. I think it was maybe six people. Okay. Um, and then once they got to the point where the game was greenlit um, by the owners of the company, they're like, okay, cool. Now we need to start building up a team. So it's very slowly kind of building up. And you know, part of that process is also kind of figuring out what you actually want to release with right. and what needs you need to fill in that amount of time. So yeah. um, when I joined, I think I think I might have been the 12th employee on the games team a <laughs> year ago. And then I spent uh, a lot of time also building up the team to what we are now. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have for right now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank awesome. You. Thanks, man. Listening to the oneofus.net podcast network.